any plugs are installed, all your final finishing done, now it's time to actually finish the chair. So we're going to do a finish that pot that Christopher Schwartz wrote about in Popular Woodworking Magazine. It was uh, The article was entitled, A Simple Dirty Mahogany Finish, I believe, or something like that. And that's what we're going to do here. It's, it requires you to either buy some de-waxed shellac. This is Zinser's seal coat. And the seal coat is the only shellac that they sell that is de-wax. And on the can, it says 100% wax-free. The other shellacs they sell are not de-waxed, and they do have wax in it. Um, for us, or for what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a one-pound cut with um, this BTNC Brooklyn Tool and Crafts uh, Garnet Shellac Flakes. And to make your own shellac mixture, all you need is flakes, whatever color you want. We're going to use a garnet, which is what Christopher Schwartz used in his article. We're going to use some denatured alcohol. We need a scale to measure out our shellac. And I have a measuring cup here to help us measure out our alcohol so we get the correct mixture. Now I'm going to make a one pound cut. I know one pound cut's not very thick, but the problem with the chair is we have lots of little parts all over the place and nooks and crannies to get into. Not necessarily little parts, but nooks and crannies and small little places to get into. And we need a little bit of extra time. So a one pound thin coat will help us get into all these nooks and crannies without creating any streaks or, or um, having the, the, the slack run or anything else like that. So let's get to it. Let's make some shellac. To make a one pound cut of shellac, you want to pour in one cup of denatured alcohol into your container. After pouring in one cup of denatured alcohol, take your shellac flakes and measure out one ounce of your flakes. Here I'm putting my flakes into my measuring scale and slowly watching it until I get to one ounce. Once I get my one ounce of shellac flakes, I'll pour them into my denatured alcohol. And with all of them poured in, I'll cover the lid and shake up the jar. It'll take anywhere between 2 and 24 hours for your shellac flakes to completely dissolve into the denatured alcohol. The warmer it is, the faster they'll dissolve. What you want to do is make sure that every couple hours you come by and give it a good shake. You don't want to have any flakes sitting on the bottom of your mixture and not mixing in with the alcohol. All right, it's just about time to put shellac on the chair. Before we do that though, we want to blow the chair out with some compressed air. Mahogany is a very porous wood, very open, and there's going to be lots of dust and debris in this, especially if your shop's like mine where you have kind of okay dust collection. Maybe you have an air cleaner like I do, but if you're doing other work or just this work, there's going to be dust all over the chair. So let's grab some compressed air, blow out the chair, and then it'll be time to put our first coat of shellac on. To distribute my shellac, I take my glass jar and I pour it into a squeeze bottle. I then take the squeeze bottle and squeeze some shellac into a piece of foam set inside of my cotton rag here. You'll see here that I'm putting together the cotton rag after squeezing some more shellac into it and I make sure that the part of the rag that's touching the chair is completely flat. And as I press into the pad it releases more shellac from the foam through the pad and onto the chair. So just make sure you go through every surface and apply shellac evenly with the direction of the grain if possible. Here you see me applying shellac to the back slats as I'm holding the chair. After applying the first coat of shellac, you may miss a few places and that's okay. What I like to do is, at this point, grab a little artist brush 
before I actually dip it into the shellac, I've charged it with a little bit of denatured alcohol. And now I can hit just the little spots that I missed. Where the leg and the rails and aprons meet, I may have missed a small little spot, and I can hit that now. Or up in the underside of the crest rail, where I try to get the pad in there, but I just perhaps didn't hit, make contact with everything. I just finished buffing the chair out with this 4 out steel wool. Before this, after each subsequent coat I built up, I put four coats on in total. Um, I would sand with a higher and higher grit piece of paper. So I started at um, 320, moved up to um, 600 grit, and then a 1200 grit, and then my steel wool. So everything's nice and smooth. Next thing I'm going to do is blow all this off and then we're going to apply our wax. After you blow the chair off with some compressed air to get the steel wool or whatever is left of it off the chair, you may want to grab a cloth and just lightly damp it and run it all over the chair and you're going to end up picking up a lot more of the steel wool residue as well. Um, once you do that, let the water dry completely. shouldn't take that long, especially if it's just barely damp. We're talking a couple minutes at most, and then we can get to the wax. At this point, if you want to stop, you're welcome to. The chair actually looks really good. I'm, I'm in love with the color. I think it's toned really well. Uh, but I wanted to just do this one extra step in, the, in Christopher Schwartz's finish here, which is to put this Liberon, uh, wax polish, black bison, Tudor oak, wax on. Um, it smells. I'm not gonna try to you know, sugarcoat it or anything like that. It definitely smells. So you don't want to do this in the house. You want to do it in the shop, and the smell lingers for a little while too. So, you know, five, seven days maybe. It, it actually stays around for a little bit. But once it's gone, it's great. So um, we're going to use this maroon uh, pad. It's actually um, like a double lot steel wool. And what's great about this is it'll help us as we work the wax, it'll work the wax into the pores and the grain and the mahogany where it'll then um, help give it this enriched, aged look. So we're going to get the wax in, let it flash, and then once you let it flash, you'll just take a rag and buff it out. So, let's get to it. You want to make sure to work it into every little crevices. All right, the chair looks great. Four coats of garnet shellac and then the wax buffed in, the uh, Liberon black Tudor oak wax, and it looks fantastic. The, the wax has gone into all the pores and the mahogany, and it's really given it a really great arts and crafts look. Um, it just looks fantastic. Nice and smooth. Every time I went up another coat of shellac that kept sanding with a higher and higher grid of sandpaper. And finally at the end I used some steel wool to level out and get rid of any other imperfections that were in the shellac finish. And then we put the, the oak on, the Tudor oak wax, and it looks great. Um, what's really nice about the Tudor oak wax, or this wax for that matter, is that not only does it get inside the pores, um, it also helps age the piece in the sense that you get what looks like dirt up in all the little parts of the chair. So for instance, there's a little bit of black um, wax around the carving. There's a little line of black wax where the rails and the aprons meet the legs. And same thing with the headrest. And what I like about that personally 
is that it helps to, once again, age the piece. It looks like the piece is maybe, well, it looks like the piece is considerably older than what it actually is. And I think that looks really great. You could have always stopped after the shellac because the piece looked really great just with the shellac itself. But if you want to go and get this other look, uh, more of a, an older arts and crafts finish, this is a great way to go. Now, we got to go off and make ourselves a seat. Time to make the platform for our seat. So what I have here is a quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. If you want, you can use half inch Baltic birch plywood too. A um, quarter inch is maybe for something that you're not gonna sit in as long, perhaps a dining chair, um, or you don't want a high exposure. Um, half inch is great for when you have something that's gonna have more wear on it. So for me, this is gonna be more of a side chair uh, with a little table, and it's gonna sit in the corner, and you may sit there to read, you may pull it over to join a larger group of people, in your living room or something like that. So I'm gonna do a, a thinner platform for my seat, but half an inch is great too. Um, and you also want to use Baltic birch plywood. You don't want to use a lesser grade because the Baltic birch plywood has um, no voids in it, and the no voids equals a much stronger plywood. So that's what we want. The other thing you're gonna need is a tape measure or some kind of long ruler, straight edge with a ruler maybe, that's what I'm gonna use. Um, a sliding bevel gauge and your piece of plywood with your 12 degrees marked on in it and the pencil. So the first thing we're going to do is set this bevel gauge to 12 degrees. Alright, looking at our quarter inch sheet of plywood here and one of the first things I did is roughly halfway across the width I drew a center line and marked it my rear. I also took a couple measurements I took a measurement from the distance in the rear from edge to edge and that came out to um, 15 and 1 quarter inches and then I took a measurement from the front to the back and that came out to 17 and a half inches. So the first thing we want to do is mark out 15 and a quarter inches wide. So half of 15 is 7 and a half. So seven and a half plus an eight is seven and three quarters. So we're gonna mark out seven and three quarters here and seven and three quarters here. Now remember, your chair is gonna may differ from mine. Everybody's chair is gonna differ from, from each other depending on your setups, where you make cuts, uh, lots of factors. So my measurements are just rough for you. Just follow these steps, take your same measurements and you'll end up with a perfect seat as well. So um, seven and three quarters on both sides. Okay, let's now we made our little marks, let's bring down the line. And I want to verify that this is indeed fifteen and a quarter of an inch is wide. Okay, so now I have two marks at 15 and a quarter inches. And our seat needs to have an eighth of an inch space on each side all the way around. So let's take that into account now and subtract an, an eighth of an inch from both sides. So I'm gonna bring up my ruler here, my square and just make a tick mark an eighth of an inch over. And then another one over here, an eighth of an inch over. And the reason why we're doing this is we need some room for the leather and cotton and everything else. So now that we've marked those two points, let's take our bevel gauge here and bring it over and strike a line. Now that we have those two lines struck, we can come over here and extend that line with our roller. Now that we have those two lines drawn, we need to come out 
our distance from our rear to our front, and our rear to our front distance is 17 and a half. If we subtract an eighth of an inch from both sides, that's 17 and a quarter. So I'm going to square up my ruler with my square here and just mark out 17 and a quarter here. Mark 17 and a quarter on my line and then mark 17 and a quarter on my other line. And now I can connect these three points. The next thing I did was I went over to the bandsaw and I cut this piece here. What I did was I took a, some hardboard from the lamination that I'd already drilled through and made sure this was square, these two edges, and I drew a 12 degree angle this way, and I came up just some amount of distance, didn't really matter, a couple inches or so, and squared off a line across this edge, cross cut this piece and cut these two parts out. And what this allows me to do is to bring this over to my leg, with this clamped up, the front here is now parallel with the front apron. And what I can do is take a square, line it up against the outer edge, and make a tick mark where the outer edge of my front apron is, and then come from the back and the back I can make a tick mark for the outside of my rail. Now with the front apron and the rail marked out, what I can do is come over here. I know I already came in an eighth of an inch from the front, so I'm going to take my square here, line it up with my tick mark, and come in another eighth of an inch. And then from there I'm going to strike a line. And then I made a tick mark over here for the outside of the side rail. And I have to come in three quarters of an inch for the width of the rail plus another eighth. Make a tick mark. I need to lift up this piece so I can bring bevel gauge over here and then strike a line. Now these two lines, I now know the dimensions of the inside corner. So what I can do is strike two lines down Okay, and of those two inner lines, so I can now take all these lines I drew. So this is the, the two inner lines, one for the front apron, one for the side rail that we brought in an eighth of an inch here, and then three quarters of an inch plus an eighth of an inch. Line all of this up with my other lines visually, and now I know where the leg and dents into the seat. And I can just come in here and draw that mark. Now I can either draw the same mark on the other side. When I flip the melanine over for the other side of the template, um, I, you know, drawing on the melanine with pencil is not going to work all that well. Permanent marker, maybe. So but what's easier is, for me at least, since I use this melanine uh, piece of the melanine on it. I just brought my lines up on the outside everywhere. I can just line all those little lines up and I can find my indent and mark that out. Now that I've marked everything out, I'm going to head over to the bandsaw and cut this out.
I have the seat sitting in the chair right now and I had to make a couple of small little indent cuts back here and I'll show you those. Um, but now what I want to do is make sure I have enough room all the way around. So these little pieces of oak here that I have, this is, I use these to help me locate my seat frame inside my chair. So these are an eighth of an inch thick and now you can use these by moving the frame up, placing them around the edges. Let's see if I can put them on the side. Okay, I'm good here, I'm good here, but I can't move over any. Let's see. Okay, I'm good over here on the left as you face. That makes this good on the right. Okay, and the front. So I'm just putting these around, making sure I have enough room. So I can't go here in that back corner because I need to relieve a little bit of material over here. Let me show you that. To know just how much material I have to relieve, I take one of my spacers, place it up against the leg, draw a line with my permanent marker, and then place the spacer against the other part of the leg and draw another line. I'll do this on both sides of the chair. Then I will head over to the bandsaw and remove this extra material. I got the seat back in, got enough room all the way around in the front. In the back, I can take a piece and push it in and run it down the length on both sides. So we're good on the eighth of an inch space in the front, the back, and the two sides. But um, let's just double check on these little back corners here where we are. Take a spacer, we got, I can see some daylight there. I can see daylight here, but on the sides, I'm pretty sure I'm too close. So I need to remove a little bit of material from each side now, I believe. So you can see here, I need to remove just a little bit of material on the inside of this little notch right here. So let's head over to the bandsaw, do that, and you should be good. Now that we've cut the seat and it fits inside of our chair, we got an eighth of an inch all the way around on all the sides. It's time to do a little bit more work to the plywood itself. Next thing we're going to do is actually remove some material from the plywood. We're going to use a router to make slots throughout the plywood. This is using Michael Fortune's uh, technique for removing material in the plywood that, which helps the plywood itself flex more matching the shape of the person sitting in it. With this as our center line, what I want to do is set these two inches off from each other, two inches on center. So if that's the center, and then we'll come here, we'll mark in an inch, mark in another inch, mark over two. With these marked, these two inches off center in the back, I'm going to bring up a framing square and just bring these lines, spring lines all the way up to the front. Now what we want to do is place stop and start marks two inches in from the back and the front. I think I'm going to add one more here. Now we have our layout where we're going to cut some grooves all the way through into our seat. I have a piece of waste, below, waste material below. This happens to be some half inch MDF with walnut veneered on top of it. 
and I have my seat here. I have some hardboard. I marked a pencil line showing which side the edges that I'm going to line up with the router. And with my little palm router, mini router here, and a quarter inch uh, spiral bit. And I'm using this quarter inch spiral bit because it's already been marked to use on plywood. Um, it's not one that I would use on anything but plywood because it's hit plywood. I already came and lined up the hardboard and the bit with my line. And I have some double stick tape on my hardboard and I'm just going to get that lined up to my line. Now I have a fence guide to run against and I'm just going to run my router and take out this piece, move over, mark the next and continue all the way across until I finish every single slot that I'm going to make. Now that we've routed the slots out of our plywood, the next thing to do is put the first layer of foam onto the plywood. Here I have, this is a, it says camping and backpacking pad. This is a high density foam that is used for the bottom layer of sleeping bag. You put this on the ground, then you put your sleeping bag on top of that. And it's foam and it's super high density, very thick. Not very thick, but um, very dense, and but very thin. So I tend to buy this at the sporting goods store. It's not that expensive, ten, fifteen dollars or so, and uh, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to take this out, put it onto uh, my pad, and mark it out. So let's get to it. And you'll find that it just fits the depth of our chair seat. Place it on top, grab a utility knife, and cut away from the edge of it, removing the excess material. Now that we have a rough cutout for our first layer of foam, I have this FastTac upholstery adhesive. This is great. Um, you shake it up a lot, you spray it on both sides, put it together, and you've got a permanent bond. So we're going to I'm going to spray one side of my plywood and then one side of my foam, put the two of them together. You don't want to do this in the shop, this stuff will get all over the place. So I'm going to go outside real quick, spray both of them, come in, put it together. Okay, I'm back. Everything's been sprayed. Let's find which is the thin. Make sure you have good contact. And after a couple of minutes, it's, these will just stick to each other. They're completely bond. The um, adhesive is very sticky. And it tacks up and it gets all over you. Just want to go around the edges, make sure everything is touching. Well, that, that everything's bonded, that is. So this is some two inch high density foam. You, this is a two by 22 by 22, which is enough to do our whole seat all at once. And you can get this over at your local craft store. Uh, it's not that expensive. You can also buy the stuff by the yard. I just happened to buy these and I went to um, one store and they always are running coupons and I you know, got this for I think 40% off or something. Um, and I tend to buy it when the coupons are going so it's a good price. You can see when I put this down I flip on top my plywood and the first layer of padding. We may have to angle this to get the fit we need. Yeah, we're going to have to angle it a little bit, but we have enough total area here that we can get this, this one piece of foam and get the entire seat. So um, the next thing to do 
is to get the excess blue foam out, or most of it off, and then we can mark and uh, make some cuts on our two inch high density foam so that we can cut and spray and put the two of these together. So I'm gonna take the green foam off. I grab my utility knife and I have a junk blade in here so I don't mind if it gets stuff on it. I'll just, just glue. Now that I've cut the blue foam all the way back to the edges of the plywood base, it's time to get this fit into our green two inch high density foam. If I angle the seat a little bit, I can get the entire seat in this one piece of foam. I'm going to take a permanent marker and mark out a rough outline. So you can definitely do this with your X-Acto knife. It's not going to be pretty. You could probably also cut this with the jigsaw as well. I'm going to head over to the bandsaw and remove this rough rest of this rough area out. On the bandsaw. All right, now that we've cut this to a rough shape, I'm gonna go out and do the same thing as before. I'm gonna spray one side of this and then spray one side of my green foam and I'm gonna get two of them glued together and come right back. Perfect. That's it, they are bonded. Here's the problem though, this stuff is super sticky. The last thing you want to do is um, have this go through your bandsaw when it's uh, not dried yet. So I'm going to take my seat, set it aside, and I'll let it sit overnight because we still have some work to do to this, but the last thing I want to do is run this through the bandsaw with that glue still sticky and trust me it is very sticky and it gets all over the place. Okay it's time to cut away the excess foam. To do this what I'm going to do is run the seat with the plywood base up and I'm going to make sure that the plywood base is touching the back of the blade as I cut through the foam. That way I can almost use this plywood base is a template as I'm cutting to the edge of it. Before we forget, we want to drill some holes into our high density foam, not the green high density foam that you can buy from the Arts and Crafts store, but the light blue high density foam that you buy from the sporting goods store. That foam needs to have holes drilled into it so that the air that is stored in the seat as someone's sitting down on it can escape. So I'm just gonna drill you know, five or six holes into my slots, a couple in the center, a couple on the side. Now that we've drilled our holes through our seat, it's time to finish the seat off. So let me walk you through what you're gonna need. We're going to need, obviously, our seat. Um, we're going to need to use some batting. Cotton's great. This happens to be a polyester silk blend. This will work fantastic. You're going to need something to cover it. Um, I happen to have some leather here. Uh, you can also use a synthetic leather or a, uh, a pattern of some sort from a fabric. If you're going to use a pattern for a fabric, you want to make sure that you center that pattern along both the horizontal and the vertical distances of the chair. And then to cover the bottom of the chair, I also have a, a black fabric. Um, beyond that, uh, as a basic kit, you're going to need a heavy duty um, stapler and a nice pair of scissors. First thing we need to do is put some batting on top of our seat. So I'm going to grab some batting out of here. I'm going to 
to spread the batting out. And excess batting just want to rip off. And what we're doing is we're going to put a couple layers of this on top. And all the batting that comes to the bottom, just rip it off. Grab some more. So the first layer I put down was a nice thin layer that went all across the seat. Now I'm putting a thicker layer on that's going to just go over the edges of the seat. Okay, and if you want for a, a slightly higher look in the center, you can grab another piece. Pull that out so it's almost to the edges all the way around. Perfect. Let's grab our piece of leather. And flip everything over. Great. So now with everything flipped over, You can see when we pull up the leather here, there's extra batting. We want to get rid of this batting just in the center to start with. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we can stretch and get everything in. So I got a little bit extra on the left. I'm kind of short over here on my leather piece. Just going to pick up a little bit. Okay, I can reach over here and I can reach around. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull this leather nice and taut and throw a staple in the center. You need to make sure that the staple gun sits all the way on top of the seat and you have a good pressure when you push this down. That way it seats the staple all the way in. Good. So that's our first staple in the front. Now we want to do a staple in the back. So we want to make sure to pull this nice and tight. Fold it over. Make sure everything's even. There's no, no bumps or anything else like that back here. You want a nice smooth surface. Pull it all as tight as you can. And throw another staple in the center. Now I want to do the same thing on the right and left. We've got a little bit too much batting here. We'll pull some of that out. Some of it you can tuck back in too if you want. I'm going to pull this nice and tight too. Making sure I'm smooth. Throw a staple down into the center. Now I got a lot of extra overhang right here. We'll cut that off a little bit. In the meantime, let's pull this back, get it nice and tight. So now you can flip everything over. Take a look. And you can see what our finished seat's going to look like. We can pull it in a couple directions to smooth this out. It'll look great. So the first thing we want to do is start to work towards our corners, but not actually get into the corners. So we take our staple gun or our stapler. And 
while you're pulling everything nice and tight, throw a couple staples in, but don't go all the way to the corner. We gotta do some folding. Check your work. Everything's nice and smooth in the back. I gotta do some pulling when I set this in the front. Let's do that now. So you can see I'm pulling the leather this direction as well as back at the same time. And I'm gonna throw some staples in. Now I'm gonna go in the other direction. I'll fix that staple in a minute. Yeah, everything's looking nice and smooth. Great. So now I have a ton of excess material here. Um, I'm not the best at cutting my rough stuff. It's, I don't know. It's, it's what it is. So let's remove some of this excess material that's going to help us when we actually do all these corners and not be seeing all this ex excess material. Okay, I removed some excess material in the back and now we're going to staple down the sides and the same thing here, we're going to want to pull everything nice and tight. Check my work. That looks really good. Now I can remove this excess material. Okay, so that's how everything's looking. I'm liking it. Now what we want to do is make our corners. So there's a couple different ways people go at this. I tend to like to fold back. Let me show you that. So I like to fold back into this direction. Get myself a nice little fold like that. I'll lightly staple it in and then try to mimic the exact same piece on the other side. Some people like to pull um, all the fabric back like this instead so you get two. I'm not a fan of that but if you like it that's great. This is another way of pulling the fabric back. So you pull everything into the corner but for me I'm just going to do these little triangles there. I'm just going to tack it down with one staple to start and that way I can see if I can mimic it on the other side. Once you pull that second one, you take a look at both. See if you're there. See where the fold is. You want to make sure you have the folds on the corners in the same spot. And if you do, tack it down. Okay, let's go to the back and we're going to do the same thing. Let's take a look at that. There's our seat. I think it looks pretty good. Now he's got to come in, remove some of this excess material, and tack down the corners. Finally, to finish off the bottom, we have one last thing to do, and that is to take this black fabric and cover up the plywood seat. So what I like to do is just grab the fabric, move it towards the back, fold a nice clean line over by folding it over so I can see where the back is. Getting it very close to that back of the chair. Grabbing a staple, 
Hopefully you're having better luck with your stapling than I am today. And just staple down. And just cut back to the material. All right, let's do it. Here's our finished seat. Let's put it in. Awesome. That's our Gamble House living room armchair. I am extremely excited. Um, this has been a fantastic project. I think it's time to sit in the chair. Um, it looks really great. I'm gonna put the chair down and let's let's try it out. This is the first time I've sat in the chair. Yeah, this is good. This is really good. Oh, I like it. I love it. Everything's nice and smooth. The wax has done such a great job. I'm penetrating the grain. It's got this great look. It's the mahogany just looks fantastic. Got a little dust on my pants that came off onto the chair. But um this is great. This is awesome. I I hope you are here and sitting in your chair right now, or very soon going to be sitting in your chair right now. This is just such a great experience. Um, everything just feels great. The curvature at the back, is, for me, is just right. Um, if you want, you can come a little forward, lean into it a little bit. Um, the arms are at a great height. Uh, I love this chair. I love building this chair. Um, I built a number of these. And every time I sit in a new chair, almost and same thing when I do a, a piece that's a table or, or a, a cabinet of some kind, but more so than anything when I do a chair, I love sitting in a chair. I'll just sit in this chair today now for maybe an hour, two hours. I'll just sit to try to remember how the chair feels. When I sell a chair and I send it off to somebody, that's when I definitely sit for a couple hours. I'll just take in the chair, every little nook and cranny, feeling the surfaces, remembering how that chair felt to sit in it for the first time. But um, I hope you had a really fun time building this project. Um, I know it's a little complicated, but you know, every step of the way I try to help you as much as possible with jigs, uh, trying to give as as detailed of an explanation as I could without sounding too much like I rambled. Um, but I can't wait to see what you guys have built and I want to see uh, pictures of that too. So definitely send them in. Videos would be even great. Share them on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and everything else. But um, for right now, I'm just going to take in the chair and enjoy it. So thank you so much for joining me on this adventure, and uh, we'll see you on some more projects soon, hopefully.